Hey friends, welcome back to our last day of Harry Potter. Oh, I'm so sad, but we have had a great week building Quidditch games, doing potions, and today is the day we will sort ourselves into houses with this fun little paper sorting template. If you haven't printed it already, you should definitely print the template that we have. I would say print it on cardstock so it's a little bit sturdier. Um, and then I'm gonna go over our supplies in just a second and do our student shout outs. If you're here and you want a shout out from us, make sure you type it in the box. And if you're new to us, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can get all of our downloads at patreon.com slash rosyresearch and you can share the message with all your friends. And if you send us photos of your student work, we will put it in our student spotlight at the pre-show where we are watching our tadpoles and our caterpillars go through the process of metamorphosis, which is taking a while, but I am super excited. Our caterpillars are actually starting to go into their chrysalises, so we will see them as butterflies shortly. Today's stuff, what you need, you're going to need a hole puncher. If you don't have a hole puncher, you'll be able to use something like a super sharp pencil to make the holes, no big deal. Um, you're gonna need a, a pair of scissors, to cut our stuff out, you need a coin cell battery. So this is a CR2032 battery. You can find these at the grocery store, but you're gonna need one of these for every project that you make with our paper circuits. You're gonna need some LEDs. Now I have a red, blue, yellow, and green LED, which will tell us what house it sorts into. If you don't have those, if you've got like a bunch of rainbow LEDs, that's totally fine. We can wire in four different rainbow LEDs and we could just write below it what house that would mean that you're in. But you're gonna need some LEDs. You need the copper tape that we've been using. Looks just like this guy. You can find it at the garden stores or online. Um, you need some masking tape or scotch tape, any type of tape that's non-conductive. So duct tape will also work for that. And then this wasn't on our original supply list, but for troubleshooting, it could help if you have little pieces of tin foil with you. And then of course the printout, and I think that's all we need, which is awesome. Cause you guys can decorate it on your own time. This is a very plain, sad, boring looking sorting hat, but I'm sure with a little art, we'll make All right, well, let's get started. So the first thing we are going to do when we make our sorting hats is we are going to take our template and we're gonna fold it in half so that you can still see the picture. So I am going to fold it in half just like this so I can still see the picture. And then we are going to cut all around that gray line. And this part right here, you'll notice it doesn't cut. So this part will actually be what hinges those two pieces together. So first we are going to go ahead and Fold it in half so you can still see the stuff. And then you're gonna cut around the dark gray line. It doesn't have to be perfect. Whatever cutting mishaps you have will just give your sorting hat a little extra character. We'll make it your uniquely yours. Callie said that she took a million Harry Potter quizzes and she got a different answer every time. Ooh. Well, you couldn't take a million and get a different answer every time because there's only four answers. I guess five if you're a muggle. Mm. Mm. Maybe they came up with some new houses just for her. Ooh. All right. So as we're cutting, again, don't worry if the cut's perfect. It's not important to our project on how perfect that cut is. We just need to cut all the way around it. And if they don't have cardstock, is that okay? Yeah, it's okay if you don't have cardstock. Your final project will just be like easier to break. It'll be a little bit flimsier in that sense that paper is just a sort of flimsy. So once it's cut, it should look just like this. And then the next piece we're gonna do is there's these four um, dark black holes. These holes, when we fold it, will actually line up right with where we put our LEDs. So we are gonna punch, use a hole puncher to punch these holes so that we can see where our LEDs will come through. So I'm just gonna make a quick four hole punch, just like this. And we'll do the best we can to line it up. I'm doing it upside down, so I'm sure you'll do a good job. 
Maybe this one needs to go a little bit lower. There we go. So now I've got these nice holes for when I put LEDs here, they'll sort of peek through at the very end, just like I have here. Otherwise, they'd be all the way under the paper. So that's what we're gonna do with those hole punches. If you don't have a hole puncher, you could use like a sharp pencil or the tip of a pair of sharp scissors to make a nice little hole in there that will give you the same effect of that. And then I'm realizing I forgot my Curious George book. Maybe we'll have Evan go grab our Curious George book while you guys finish your cutting and also finish punching those holes. So that's what we are go have going on at the moment. And then we are going to wire it up. And I'll give you guys some quick things as we're waiting for Curious George to come. When we wire it up, we wire it up with George, this copper tape. <gasps> we don't have Curious George, but we do have Harry Potter, which is perfect. So I'm gonna tape my template up to Harry Potter just so that you guys can see it as I do it. And so if you're just joining us for um, circuits and this is your first time, this is the copper tape. We use this instead of wires for our little electrons. It gives them a highway to run around on. And copper tape is a little bit tricky. So first, the hard part, one hard part, is getting it peeled off of the backing. So there's copper on the front, and then there's this white backing on the back that is not sticky yet. So when you take the tape off, you've got to peel it like a sticker. And now this side is sticky right here, so it sticks to my finger. And the other side is not. This is the non-sticky side. If I peel it all the way off to try and then tape it down, it does this. It curls up in ringlets, and it makes it really, really difficult to lay down your tape without ripping it. And we don't want to rip our tape because once we rip the tape, we have basically made like this big hole in our road, in our highway that those electrons go on. And even if I tape on top of it to continue my road in a different direction, the electrons will be on this great road and then they'll see this like end of the road and they look up and they see another road is up there, but there's no way really for them to get all the way up there. There's all this gunk and goo and glue that they have to go through. And that can really break your circuit. So one of the things is we always stick it down as we peel. And when we get to things that turn, we always try to turn the corners um, by folding it. All right, so you're gonna take a nice little piece of copper tape. I'm gonna get Isabella hers. And if you're all done, we are ready to wire it up. So the first part of wiring is we're actually gonna wire on all of these yellow and orange pieces. Some of them are pretty easy. Some of them are just straight up like these guys. Some of them have a slight bend, which is probably if it's your first time, I would start with the four straight ones and then go to the one that has a slight bend. And then this one's gonna be really tricky because we have to bend it a whole bunch, all right? If we break it, if you just started and you break it, I would suggest starting over. If you're almost done and it breaks, I have a solution for you that we'll talk about when we get there. And as you guys are doing this independently, I wanna say these red dots right here are really important. These are basically our switches. When this red dot touches that red dot is when this LED will light up. So if this red dot touches this red dot, this LED lights up and that can continue where these two touch, it lights up this LED. And if these two touch, it lights up that LED. So this is how we have this sort of fun unknown switch going on. But if you stopped this tape before the red dot, there might not be a good spot for you to ever press where it lights up that LED. So these red dots are gonna be really important. We always wanna hit those red dots with our copper tape. We should acknowledge real quick that Millie yeah. is definitely here. Oh, hi Millie! Oh, I'm excited that you're here with us. All right, so I'm gonna start, well, actually we're gonna, I said we're gonna start with these straight ones. So I'm gonna start with some straight ones and I'm gonna just peel it with my fingernails and as I peel it, so I've got this little T, it started to peel, I'm going to start to stick it down and then continue to peel the backing as I stick further. So I'm gonna go straight on here and I gotta make sure that I hit that red dot. It's really important. You don't wanna go too far over the red dot because it might give you too many spots where you can press to hit an LED. But we're gonna just continue to go and I don't think that guy, you can always measure so if I can, I can measure how long I need, and then I can rip it. That's the nice thing with copper tape. You don't even need scissors. And you're gonna, again, you're gonna peel and stick. And there is a lot of copper.
copper tape we have to put down today. Um, and that can be tricky sometimes. It can get a little bit frustrating. But there is a lot of copper tape we're going to put down, and that's because we have four different LEDs and four different buttons, but only one switch or one battery. All right, so I got this guy peeled. And then I'm going to go again from right where it tells me so the LED leg has a spot to hit it. Let's move it down just a little bit. And I'm going to go straight up into this red dot. And I want to make sure I cover up that red dot. That's going to be helping me to determine where my switch is going to be. Wait, is this good? So Isabella is asking, is this good? Here's Isabella. She's wondering if this is good. I mean, it's kind of okay. It might work. It might work better. Who knows? Um, but that is something we should take a note of. So if she finds out, oh, this LED never lights up even when I'm pressing everywhere, it might be because it's not doing a great job. And then that's an easy thing. If you've made a note of it, you can go back, open it up, and then change that piece. All right. And then we're going to add some more pieces. So this is really great and easy if you are starting with the straight lines. It's not too bad. And if we get ahead of you, that's okay. You can always pause YouTube, even though we're live. Although I guess for some people we won't be live because they'll be watching later. But you can always pause it as we go. And you can always ask Evan questions too if you run into a question and you're not sure. All right, so I'm gonna go right to the tippity top and I'm gonna cut that guy off. Sometimes when I have these little wrinkles in it, that's okay. I like to take my thumbnail and I just press right along it and it gets a, a really nice press. And that is not something you need to worry about. Let me get my last long piece in here. Just like this. And this gives me all of my long legs of my LEDs will have a spot now to sit. And we don't want these four lines to touch because if they touch, then when one LED lights up, the other one will light up too. So we don't want that. If we want them to light up independently, they need to not touch each other. All right, so now I've got that guy. So I have all four of these lines going up. They all hit the little red dot pretty well. This one's maybe a little off, but that should be just fine. So now I'm going to do on this side, I'm going to do this guy. It only has one bend. So I'll show you an idea on how you can bend. And I'll show you one easy way here. And then I'll show you a couple different techniques over on this side. So when you have a bend, you really have to make sure you don't rip your tape. It's really hard to do that the first few times. But the more you practice it, the better your paper circuits will be. Because every time you rip the tape and you layer it, is another spot where those little electrons have to go into the glue and then they get really tired and they're too tired to slide down that slide and say yippee and light up and then your circuit doesn't work and it's a huge bummer. So a lot of a little extra work here gives you a lot of payoff later. So I always start knowing which way I want it to go. So my tape's going to go down like that and I'm going to hit it on the yellow and then when I get here where the bend is one way is to fold it and I'm going to show you guys up here. But another way is to actually pull this off a little bit extra and then just stick it down to where you want. So I have this nice big bubble wave, see how it comes out. And I can just keep, continue to put that guy down. And I have this bubble and I'll just press it down like that and it kind of does the fold for me. So that's a nice question. way to do that. Yeah, question. If someone punched out the wrong sides, is it okay? Mm. Could they flip it? Like if they punch out the holes on the bottom and then... Have Over here? Bit, yeah. You could flip it. If you punch out the holes on the wrong side, I think what I would probably do is put some tape on the back side of your hat so that it kind of covers up those holes and then punch out these four holes. Because this, this tape line isn't on this side. And then you don't want these two tape lines on the same side because one goes to the top of the battery and one goes to the bottom. I mean, if you feel confident mirroring the tape and ignoring the template, you totally could. But I think what I would do is maybe take a piece of tape, 
put it underneath as a spot for those um, LEDs to sit later, and then go ahead and punch the other ones. I think that's what I would do. All right, and so this one is sort of a longer piece. I'm measuring all four legs to decide how much copper tape I need, and I'm still gonna give myself a little extra, just to make sure, because the worst thing you can do is get all the way there and then run out, and then be like, oh man, I gotta start again. So I'm gonna show you the folding technique on how to use copper tape on this guy. So since I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna hold it so my tape is coming up like that, and I'm gonna peel it, and I'm gonna stick it down so it all sort of faces up, just like that. And then here, what I could do instead of sort of giving myself a little extra and then pressing it down and then later folding it, I can still fold it here. The way you would do that is this line is going up. So I fold it the opposite way first. So I fold it down coming back like this. And then I'm gonna cut off some of this so you can see it a little better. And then I'll pull on this white and I'll slowly stick it down going straight up. And that will make my fold right there just like that and again I got to make sure I hit that red dot and if I'm going off center a little what I can do is I can really gently pick the tape up and then rearrange it to where it needs to go and in fact I'm sort of noticing I have my masking tape to hold it up here right on top of that little guy so here I have this really big turn I need to basically go almost 180 degrees so I'll fold it and go a little bit this way and then I'm going to fold it again and go back down. And I don't have to hit the yellow line perfectly. I just need to make sure I hit these red dots, just like that. And then I can press that down to give it a little extra. And then again, this is a big fold. I got to go all the way back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it and go a little bit sideways. So I'm going to fold it and go a little bit sideways. So that sort of makes me go this direction. And then I can fold it back again and then come straight up, which is perfect. And we're going to come up and we're going to hit this last little red dot like that. And I'm going to use my thumb to press everything down just like that. And now I have my four pieces of tape. And it looks like Isabella's got hers. She was a little faster than me. So Isabella's is looking really good. You'll notice she's got these crinkles in her tape. That's totally fine. If you have crinkles in your tape like that, don't worry, you're totally okay. What I would suggest is though, you do wanna sort of press it down as much as you can. Now, for some of you, you might've gotten really far and then had a tiny issue somewhere and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to restart. There is a trick which I'll show you. You can take a little strip of foil like this, like a little rectangle. And let's say I messed up right here. I could take this foil and I could tape it down around these edges. And I got to be careful not to tape over where that red dot was. But I could take it and I could tape the foil like this. And it makes it so that I no longer have that gluey gap between the two pieces of copper tape. I put a nice extra roadway on top. So that's, that will work if you have an accident and it breaks on you. All right, you just cut out a little piece, a tiny piece of foil, bigger than where you need it to go. And then you can put regular tape. So this is masking tape, it doesn't conduct. So masking tape, scotching tape, or scotch tape or duct tape. And then it goes right around. But my little red bubble was right under there. So you'll notice I can still see that little spot. And that will work for me. Questions from anybody? Do we have some questions that came in? Um, we had, John wanted to know, mm -hmm. is it too complicated to make the lights on the dots and the dots with the lights go? Is it okay to just reverse it? And it is it totally fine to reverse it. The nice thing about the template, though, is like these dots know... Yeah, I mean, you could go straight up to these dots, and then you could make like an M that goes like up here. Yeah, that would work. Because you can, yeah, as long as you go from, on this side you go from like dot to dot, and then this side you go from bottom to dot, that would work. That okay. would work. And I think that is the only question we have. Okay. Feel free to call out yeah, questions anytime. If you have questions, let us know, and we will do them as we go. 
So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to put our battery in. All right, and so we're going to secure our battery with tape on the sides. And when we put the battery in, on all of my templates, you have two gray circles mm -hmm. if it's going to be um, folded in. And so usually one is outlined in red. That's the positive one that's going to hit the positive side. Mm -hmm. So you have one that's not outlined at all. And that is where we're going to put our battery at. And we're going to put our battery in positive side up. And you know the positive side because it tells you on the battery, it says plus sign. And it tells me what kind, CR2032. Tells me that's a lithium battery. And there's all this writing on it. The bottom side sort of has all these like dimples in it. And it doesn't really say much. So that's the bottom. And the bottom is going to go straight down on to the side that doesn't have the red around the circle. And then I'm just going to tape it in around the edges. Because remember, for my circuit to be complete, I need it to leave the top of the battery, go through some copper tape into my LEDs where they shout yippee and light up and then go back into the bottom. If I cover the whole top of the battery, they can't ever get out. And then I'm sort of stuck with a project that's not working. So we are going to do it like that. All right, and you can tape it in in a couple places. You can tape it in in one place. It's not a huge deal. You do need to make sure that this copper tape that's in that circle will still make contact with the metal part of the battery. So not the stuff that's taped over, but the metal part. Because what's going to happen is our electrons are going to leave here. They're going to come into here. And if I'm pressing this button, they'll come up here. These two will be touching, so they'll actually jump over here, and they'll go into the LED. They won't really jump because they're actually going to be right next to each other in the final, but it looks like a big jump right now. All right, so we've got our battery in. Yes! And now we just need to add in our LEDs. So we have four colors of LEDs in our house. So we've got the red, green, yellow, and blue, which we will do. There is no right spot to put the colors of the LEDs. So if you want to put red in the first one, totally fine. If you want to put red in the last one, totally fine. Actually, it makes it a little bit more random on what house you might be in. So our LEDs have two legs in them. And one leg is just slightly longer than the other. And that's the leg that we need to have the electrons from the positive side of the battery go into. Because LEDs, when they light up, they're actually going down into a hole. And they're like having so much fun going down into that hole. They say, yippee, and they light up and we see it. But if we put it the wrong way, they'll never climb up the slide. They're such good rule followers. They'll just look at the bottom of the slide and be like, what are we doing here? And nothing will happen. So they need to be at the top of the slide to go down. And for us, the long legs are always going to go up to these long lines, which is a kind of a nice, easy way to do it. So I'm going to look at my long legs. I'm going to move this leg up so it goes straight up the long line. And I'm going to make it do the splits. So right now it's doing the splits. My long leg is up. And then I'm going to bend my short leg just so it can sort of bend along the bottom like that. And it can make nice contact. And then I will tape that in with the masking tape or scotch tape or duct tape, whatever kind of non-conductive tape. So not copper tape, not aluminum tape that you have. And the nice thing is if you make this bend in that short leg, even if you lose track of which one's which, you'll know which way it goes. All right, so I'm gonna tape it in. I need to make sure that the legs are all touching copper tape. And I, this tape piece is actually way too big for me. So we're gonna cut that down a little. And so I'm gonna make sure the leg is touching the copper tape. And- Did you show how to test? Oh, we're gonna get there. We gotta put it in first. For, to test the battery and the LED. Oh, yes. Evan is on it. We've made so many paper circuits, I forgot to test our batteries and LEDs as we went. I will show you guys how to do that in just one second. Let's pause and do that right now. So if you you want to take your battery, we want to make sure it works. This one does work. I'm pretty sure about that. And to make your LED to check it, there's a few ways you can put the LED on the battery. You could put both legs on top. You'll notice nothing happens. I could put both legs on bottom. Again, nothing happens. And that's because I'm not creating a circuit or a circle between the top and the bottom of the battery. 
I could put the short leg of the LED on top and the long leg of the battery on the bottom. So now I do have a circle from the top to the bottom, but the slide is looking the wrong way. And those electrons are such good rule followers, they're like, meh, nothing to see here. If I flip my slide around and I put the long leg on the top and the short leg on the bottom, it lights up because I have these electrons going in a circle from the top to the bottom of the battery through the LED. And when they go through that LED, they light up and they have so much fun. So this is how you can test both the battery and the LED. So you can go through and you can check all of your LEDs. My green LED doesn't actually look very green. Um, and you can check them before you put them in, which is a really good thing to do. Thank you for that suggestion, Evan. Um, and then I'm gonna actually show you right now how to test it once it's in your circuit. So I'm gonna tape down, you gotta tape down both the long leg and the short leg. And you gotta press pretty good because we gotta make sure we get good contact between the legs and the copper tape. And what you'll do is you'll take a piece of copper tape. You're not gonna take the backing off. This is just gonna be like our little tester. You're gonna put it from the top of your battery where it touches the metal part of your battery. And you are going to touch the top of your um, long piece of copper tape. And here we see it is working. The electrons are going from my little switch here down into here when I'm touching on it, into the LED where it lights up and then back to the bottom. So I still have a circle for my battery and we wanna check these every time we put one in. So that's my first one that we're gonna put in. I'm just gonna make sure I get good contacts. So I'm gonna keep pressing right there. Then we're gonna do our next one. So again, I find my long leg. The long leg goes straight up like that. The short leg goes straight down so it's sort of doing the splits right now, and then I'm gonna bend it over so it can bend over towards the battery. And then I can tape this one in too. And you wanna tape them in right on top of those circles so that it fits through our little windows that we hole punched earlier. And I'll take another little piece of tape. And one thing to know as we're taping these LED legs in, you don't wanna put such a large piece of tape that it covers all the rest of the copper tape that comes down here, because we need to tape all of our other LEDs in there too. So I'm gonna put this blue one in, and I'm gonna make sure that both legs are able to touch the copper tape. And I'm gonna tape those legs in as well. And sometimes it helps to really press on both sides of the paper to get that to come in. And then I will tape the long leg that goes straight up right in as well. So now I have the blue one in, but I wanna make sure my blue works. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna flip our copper tape over. So we have metal touching metal on the battery. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna to touch up here and there it goes. So this guy also works. And that tells me the copper tape line is really good. The connection here is good. The connection to the battery is good. And I can always double check and make sure, ooh, see it, look, I lost my red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just press on these legs. All right, and I can also show you guys a nice little trick on making it even better if you find you have problems. But by pressing on these legs, I was able to get it a better connection. All right, so we will go for our next one. Maybe we'll go for Slytherin for, who is it? Orion that likes Slytherin? This will be Orion's house. So we're gonna make it do the splits long leg up, and then we're gonna go straight over to the side. We'll bend it straight over to the side like that. And then we'll be able to, again, tape this one right in where it goes. And you guys might be ahead of me. It looks like Isabella is almost done with hers already. Or you might be behind me and that's okay. Not a race. Paper circuits take a little bit of time to learn how to make too. Yeah, George was saying that he's already got his to work and do some of it. Nice job, George. And Orion is back. Yay, Orion, we're wiring up the house for you, Slytherin. We're and gonna tape these legs in. If people are behind and you wanna ask me questions, you can come over to Zoom and I can get yep. you on track. If you've got questions, we can definitely do that over in Zoom. And Evan can always ask me questions right now. He can get a live answer, which is helpful. All right, so we're gonna check. And again, now I've actually checked that I get all of them, which is cool. And so we have one more. We've got Hufflepuff. So same thing we've been doing. Make it do the splits. So long leg goes straight up. Short leg goes straight down. 
And then the short leg is going to come over to the side so it points towards that battery. Just like that. And then we will tape this guy in here as well. And I will show you after I tape this one in what we can do if you have an LED that's a little more tricky. Because sometimes they just, whatever you do, it just seems like the LED doesn't want to light up because the legs don't want to be hitting that copper tape very well. And that can be a little tricky, but there is a solution for it. And I will teach you guys that solution. Oops, I'm a little bit far off on my bubble here. I'll move it down a little. There we go. And then I'm going to tape in this top leg like this. And I got to make sure again, it makes sure it touches that copper tape that you're not just taping it over paper because that will make it so it doesn't light up. I'm going to press nice and hard. And then again, I'm going to take my copper tape, copper to battery, and then copper tape to copper tape. And they all light up for me, which is great. Let's say you have one that's really giving you trouble. We can do the same thing that we did over here where we had that problem that maybe the tape ripped. So what you would do is you would take a nice little piece of foil, all right, and you would lift up the tape for where you were. You'll put that little piece of foil, this is actually way too big, we'll just take even a tinier piece, just a little tiny square of foil, and you'll put it face down, well there's no space to foil, we'll just put it down and then you're going to tape over that piece. And that's going to help it get a better connection on that leg, whatever leg was happening, had to ha happened to have that issue. So if you have a leg that's giving you trouble, you can use this idea where you take a little piece of foil and you tape it so that you have copper tape, LED leg, foil, and then just a non-conductive tape. So it makes a nice little sandwich. And then I can tape down over here to make sure it all stays happy. All right, my sorting hat is almost done. So I'm going to take it off right now. And now comes the next big test. We're going to fold it in half so that we can hide all of the circuit stuff, which gives it a little bit more magic. And these LEDs should hopefully pop through just like that. And you can move them and wiggle them if you need to. And now if I press where the battery is, and then I choose somewhere else, you'll notice that different lights light up and I can make them all light up. So the way that this works is you have your friend press on the battery and then press anywhere else on the hat and that is the house they would be in. So right now I'm in Slytherin. If I choose a different spot and it doesn't light up, that means I'm a muggle. Now once you have it so that they're all working, you can actually add tape around the edges or you could decorate it first and then tape it all together and you have a great, fun little hat. One thing I would recommend is making sure that you highlight where somebody needs to press and then just ask them to press somewhere else on the hat. And then you have an awesome sorting hat. Now, Isabella's is not working, and since we're live and it's not working, this is the perfect moment for us to troubleshoot. So we're gonna see what she's only done. Only the blue is not working. All right, so Isabella says, only the blue is not working. She's had this great idea of adding some extra tape over the blue. Although what I would suggest, Isabella, mm -hmm. is actually adding a piece of this foil and then taping down that little piece of foil. And I do see why hers is not working. The leg is actually sticking up a little bit too much. So if you put a piece of masking tape over that, that should make it work. So we'll let her do that real fast. Ooh, with a massive piece of masking tape. I'm not sure how we're gonna, we're gonna cut that down some. We'll cut it around the um, piece of foil, which is kind of handy. So then we just have to stick it up. Let's see. We'll stick it on over that leg, just like this. And then we can see if that fixes it for her. So let's check out if that fixed it for her. Ooh, it didn't fix it. And maybe, so one thing I'm noticing about Isabella's is how much tape is over her battery. So we could press some of that tape out. She does have metal showing, which is always what we want, but maybe we could have a little extra metal showing because that won't hurt it. And then I'm gonna double check here and it's not working. Oops, we're gonna go straight up, I think. And 
Ah, so we are still having trouble with her leg. So what we can do, we're gonna press it down really good and we're gonna lift up the tape that is on the long leg and we're actually gonna put a little piece of foil there too. So I'm gonna lift this piece up like that. And it doesn't need to be a big piece, just a tiny pea sized piece will work for you. You're gonna put it so it's like touching that leg and we're gonna tape right back over it like that. And this guy, we're gonna press really good. And let's see if that fixes it for us. Yep, so now hers are all working, which is perfect. And if you find you still have trouble, you can always add in a little bit more foil or you could try sometimes. If your whole paper circuit's not working, what I do is I just start over. I know that can be really frustrating, but sometimes when I'm teaching camps, I'll look at a circuit and it looks perfect and I cannot explain why it doesn't work. We'll try all the foil stuff. It still won't work the way we want it to. So sometimes if you're having a lot of trouble, it's easier to just start over because one little tiny thing you might have done, can't find it, it threw you off. So those are some good things to notice. So hers is pretty much ready. We're going to do a little bit of work on, oops, getting these LEDs right where they need to be. And that's because they need to stick straight up to go. And I am noticing one thing that Isabella might run into is just how well taped down these LEDs are. But you can always press really good. And then she's got hers. And then we have to try it out. Now hers is not working. And I am wondering if part of that is that we're not making very good contact with the battery right here. Because when I pushed out of the way, we just have like this big bump over there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to ask Isabella to very gently take off all of the tape over her battery. And we want to do it gently so we don't rip our template. Um, but sometimes it's easier to just completely fix a spot than it is to try to patch fix a spot. So she's going to do that. She's going to take out the whole part and then we'll put the battery in and we're going to make sure that we tape just around those edges so that it's not over the top. We, I mean, it can be over the top, but you just want the most amount of battery exposed on the top. That's really important. So we're gonna have, we're gonna just do a little tiny bit, like right there, and maybe a tiny bit on the other side, just to like sort of hold it down. But remember, this is going to actually um, be folded in the battery, so you don't really need to worry too much about it falling out because we're gonna fold it and press it. So let's see, and there we have red. I just saw the green go on. There's blue. Let's see, where is yellow? We've seen red, green, blue. We haven't seen yellow. And yellow, as I'm looking at her circuit on the inside, it looks like both of her spots are just a little shy of the red dots. So she might want to put in a little bit of foil that's taped over so that it has sort of that red dot area, just like I did here on this one, where I added a little bit extra. You can do that and that will help, all right? And the way that you can see which one, where your button is, is if you look here, kind of look, look down the middle, you can see where they're supposed to touch. So if where they're supposed to touch is not lining up, you definitely need to add a little bit of foil to that spot. And that's why it's really important you hit those red dots because those should line up perfectly when you fold it over. Um, assuming we fold it over, I guess, sort of, so it mirrors itself. How do you tape it so that it's not taping over? Ah, Isabella says, how do you tape it so it's not taping over, which is a great question. I'll show you guys on hers. And Belly, if you watch, you can do it on the other side. So to tape it where it's not taping over, one way is, I think, actually maybe the easiest way, is to take a piece of your tape and, well, no, that's not the easiest way. We're gonna take a piece of a line of foil, just a little rectangle. Doesn't need to be anywhere near this big, we'll cut it in half, Oops. like that. So I got this little rectangle like this. And what you do, so the rectangle is kind of big. It's bigger than we want, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of mirror where that copper tape was coming down on the outside, just like that. And we'll do it on the other side too, just like that. And so now it's sort of like a belt and then we'll have to cut some of this 
extra tape off so it's not coming out of her hat. We don't want to give away our magical secrets on how the hat works. So that is the way that you would do it. Just a nice little rectangle and then you tape on the sides of the rectangle, making sure you don't tape over any of the other red dots, which should be good. Oh yeah, one of the red dots is right there. And if you find you have a problem with a red dot, you can do the same thing. You can just add in an extra little spot and then add tape sort of on those edges and it should work out just right for you. And we can look, I can look down here and see, no, nope, not quite. So let's double check. Oh, there we go. So it still needs a little bit extra and we could put that little bit extra on this side if we wanted to. And we could just tape it so it goes up a little bit higher. Just like that, Isabella. If you'd like to tape it so that your piece goes a little higher on that foil. There's a little foil rectangle for you. And then once you have that all worked out, you're going to fold it up, decorate it, and you have an awesome little Harry Potter sorting hat. Um, we're going to check in with questions before we head over to Zoom. And if you're in Zoom and you're having trouble, you can just be prepared. We'll make a list. We can go through. You can show me. And I can look at all the little circuit pieces and we can try to troubleshoot which piece is not working for you. And if this is your first time with paper circuits, don't get discouraged. It takes a lot of time and practice to get these guys working. If you've worked with them a bunch and it still doesn't work, don't get discouraged. Sometimes I make paper circuits and they don't work for me either. So it takes a lot of time and practice. There's a lot that can go wrong, but when it goes right, it goes really, really right. Do we have any questions? Um, I've been trying to answer them as we go. Oh, fabulous. Um, but Yay. if anybody wants to ask Dr. Erica a question, you should yeah. throw it now. Chime on in and we will see. Hmm. I can't find where Hufflepuff is. Ooh, so Isabel's looking for where Hufflepuff is. So I can look, Hufflepuff is like right here, which is going to hit this spot right here. So those two pieces need to press together for Hufflepuff. And hers is, there we go. So hers is also a problem down here. Sometimes you need to press on these guys or you could add in that, um, what do I want to say, that foil right there to make it a little bit better. But hers, I think we are going to do a little bit of work with offline to make sure because hers is like not as happy as we would like it to be. And that's fine. We can work with that. I think what I will do with hers is we will work on adding some foil over the legs and taping it over the legs so you have the copper tape, LED leg, foil, and then tape over it, regular tape over it, sandwich, so that that leg is really sandwiched in and really making good contact with everything. But this is like an amazing, I mean, she did this all on her own. It's a really good first go of it. And you might need some parent help. You might have to drag your parents in because sometimes it's just a little bit of a dexterity thing. All right, so no questions? Hmm. Uh, but, uh, I don't see. Can you show us the switch side? How the to do switch it? side. Yeah, um, how the switch works. All right. So this is where our battery is. The battery switch. And then as we fold this over, this part right here is going to make connection with that battery. So that is how we connect to the battery. And pinching it really helps, which is why you want your person to touch it here. And then the buttons are actually where these pieces touch. So when it's folded over, they're sort of right on top of each other. And then when we press on them, it lights up. But it's just right so that when if you don't press on it, nothing lights up. And you can sort of go through and see where you are. Yeah, so the switch is sort of, we press the battery because as it folds over, it mirrors over. And then the switch is this piece touching that piece or this touching that, or this touching that. So it's those pieces that you press when you guess on where in the sorting hat you are that determines which LED will light up for you and which house you will be in. Or if you're a muggle, it would be so sad. It would be a tragedy. All right, so if there's no other questions, we are gonna head over into Zoom. If you are on YouTube and you want some questions, you can come on over into Zoom with us. All the Zoom stuff is on our Patreon at patreon.com slash rosyresearch, and it gets you access to all of our templates, all of our fun Zoom lunches with Tiny Dancer and friends, all of that good stuff. Um, and it also gets you sort of all the supply sheets and knowing what we're gonna do in the weeks coming up. And next week, we are going to go into a bug's life. We're going to learn all about bugs and help our friendly bug friends. 
And the week after, I think we are doing spies. We're going to step into the world of spies and make some spy gear for ourselves next, the week after next. So it's going to be great. We have some good stuff coming up. And Star Wars we're going to put in at the very end, right before summer break starts. So we are here every day for you guys. Come the days that work for you. Skip the days that don't. And you can't get behind because we're always on YouTube. We will see you guys shortly. Make sure you check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Have a good one. Bye, friends. All right, let's take a look at your...